Hello. Guess what, people? I made a goal and actually stuck to it for a change. So basically, um, last week, I guess we're getting back into it after I've been on hiatus for about a month. Um, so we did some like reset stuff and then this one I was, is, okay, so we did some work this week. The goal was to write the script for chapter one. And then guess what? We have the script for chapter one. Um, it's just basically the um, dialogue and stuff because I kind of see it in, as a movie. I've got like, I've got a storyboard, which is I guess the next step, and that's when I'll add in sort of what people are doing and stuff, like you know, to make it more interesting, to give them stuff to do. Um, like at the start, they're gonna be you know talking, but so that they're not just talking, doing nothing. They'll be like in the middle of a board game, you know, because they're friends, doing friend bestie stuff. Although. They kind of need to be outside to see. Do people play board games outside? Maybe they can play a sport. That would make sense. Because like, then they like go into, like I guess, the main town centre thing. So yeah, m- maybe playing a sport would make more sense. Like, I don't know, throwing a ball to each other. Um, yeah. Because in board game was my initial sort of thing, but then like as I was writing. Because I used the, uh, just... Basically, the way I write is it's, like, kind of like D&D, where I'm just a DM, and I'm, like, just noting down what my, my characters are doing. And I'm as shocked as everyone else as to what they end up doing. I mean, I'll sometimes have, like, a rough idea of where I'm going and stuff, or, like, I've already played it out in my head a few times before I start writing, but still, I have been shocked many times. Like, one time... One of my characters accidentally killed one of the others, and I was like, oh, I need to rewrite that, because you still have plot relevance. You cannot die yet. Um, my friend was very confused when I, like, messaged them, like, being like, I accidentally killed one of my characters. And they're like, how do you accidentally do that? Um, yeah. We also did, s- there was a, a video I watched that was really helpful. Um, let me, I want to specifically show it um, in my... Oh wow, I have a lot of liked videos, um, as you can tell, this one, this is the video, I want, I'll put it in the description, but it, this was good, um, it had some different techniques and stuff, but I think what really helped was it was mentioning things about this, I, our conceptions of being like a pro and stuff, and just, we sort of, I guess, put it on this pedestal, um, I, I recommend this video because that, that I feel like that gave me some of the motivation to actually get my script done. But also some other things I did was working on my locations. So I was doing some, um, oh, what are they called? Not a mind map. Concept of mood board. That's what I'm thinking of. I was talking on like a monitor comics server where someone was talking about mood boards and stuff. And that got me inspired to do it. So I've got some stuff to do with the location. So this stuff here is um to do with where the gang lives like in the prologue which is like the first chapter um i guess like before he moves and like to the main location and stuff so they live on this island maybe i'm planning to make it is an archipelago i think is what it's called when there's like several little islands but it's got this like cool tropical feel um it's got a volcano because there's a scene of human sacrifice, um, inspired by, I don't know if anyone has seen Madagascar 2, Escape to Africa. They basically have a, I need to rewatch it probably, if that's going to be my inspiration. But there's basically a scene where, like, okay, so if, for those that haven't seen the movie, basically there, there's Madagascar's, like, you're talking animal series and stuff. But in this one, there's, like, they go to Africa, um... Don't ask me which country. Um, it's not Madagascar. They go to Madagascar in the first movie, but then after that they don't go to Madagascar again, I guess. Um, but anyway, there's like a drought, so they're going to like I think they're going to sacrifice the giraffe dude in the volcano to appease the gods to get the water back. That's kind of dark for a kids movie. Um, so yeah, that that was my inspiration. 
stuff. This stuff up here is more to do with like where he ends up living. So I'm more thinking like a, a cool city aesthetic, um, dark and stuff. Cause you know, he used to live in the like the light place and now he lives in like the dark place. This, these are more for like the main city. Cause like th th these guys live in a small town, small coastal town, kind of like what I did. Like what I grew up in a small town. Um, Except mine was way less cool. Mine was just low socioeconomic and everyone was either unemployed or a retiree. It was not a good place to live. Um, it wasn't like some cool like island. It is definitely inspired by like Kingdom Hearts, how you start on Destiny Islands. I just feel like a cool, like a, a nice cozy coastal setting feels like a good place to, you know, to be a kid and stuff and to be traumatized because... These are my characters, of course they're traumatized. I, I, I don't leave them alone. Then we did some stuff to do with outlines and, you know, working out pictures and just story. Um, I still don't know how I'm going to end these things. Um, I feel like this concept's a bit open and there's still some sense of goals, but um, I don't have this distinct ending. It's because, see, I've often had an issue where some stories, it very clearly, the conflict is central to what it is. So it's very obvious, like, I guess, how I'm going to end it. Because, for example, like, my um one that was, like, a murder mystery. Like, the solution is catching the murderer. Like, then there was others where it was just so vague that it made it difficult to figure out where to take the idea at all. Whereas I feel like this one's actually in a nice middle ground, which I don't think I've had before. But I am pleasantly surprised at this. Um, oh yeah, I'll also show you that I have my mood board on my Pinterest. It's got 120 pins, so like things to do with the environment. And then I guess we'll show some of these images to get, so you guys get a vibe check of my series. So yeah, like um, lots of light and dark. I guess the vampire stuff has kind of shifted from focus, but the magic is sort of based, I guess, in that. Very different from what I was working on before. Um, I am planning to use some of the characters from that as, like, maybe mentor characters. I feel like it'd be cool to have, like, the character that was supposed to be the protagonist kind of being, like, you know, mentoring the actual protagonist. It's like, it's now your turn, son. Um, that sort of thing. Also, I ended up naming my story. It's Lux Neptus, which um, means light descendant. Now, for this sort of stuff, I was... Wait, do I not have... Yeah, I have more stuff over here. So I had, like, writing down some random words, then writing down some titles of things that I specifically like the titles. So, for example, of Dark Lord and Cabbage Lords and Cabbages was a webtoon I specifically read because I thought that title was funny. Um, yeah, I, I so that I'm like, hmm, what did they do right to get me to read? Because typically, I feel like the title isn't ex like it's part of the package of what gets you reading, but that's in combination with things like the art, um, just like other factors. I but. And I also one of the things that sort of was, I guess, semi-similar vibes. Like, I can't call it, I guess, something too funny because it's not a funny series. Um, so, yeah, I had that. And then, yeah, writing down some light and dark deities. I, the, these are copy and pasted from Wikipedia, the most trusted source on the internet. And then I had, whilst I was writing, I came up with like, the terms for, I guess, the, some of these people. And then I realized that, no... The reason why these names came too easily to me is that they already exist. Um, so I was like, oh yeah, the ones that are from this, like, descendants of this particular faction, they're the, like, children of light. And I'm like, I, I, I don't know if anyone else has this, but I don't know if anyone, like, if you get suspicious of when a, a title that just, like, a name that just flows comes to you, I swear every time that happens, it's something that already exists. If it comes too easy to you, definitely check. I mean, you probably should Google and check if it exists anyway. Um, but, yeah. And then the uh, the other, Descendants of Darkness is apparently a manga or anime. I have never heard of this, but 
I mean, apparently I have, because my brain came up with that. Unless it's just something that's already taken, like, some titles are just, I guess, if you're working as, like, I don't know, like, Death's Apprentice was one that I remember as a kid, it was a series that I was gonna make, and then I found out later that that name existed. I feel like I should have expected that, because that's a, that's something that feels like, you know, of course someone's gonna come up with that, like, that that's just cool, and then, yeah, looking up synonyms and stuff. Promised Light was a title I considered, but there is a piano piece based with that name, which is Piano Nor. Um, like, that's in Latin, which is what got me looking at Latin. Air of Light was also when I um, tried. Whoops, dropped my phone. Go me. Um, also, Children of the Sun was something I considered, because, like, sun and light, but that refers to Incan people. And I was like, oh, we, we, we can't take that. That That's culturally insensitive. So yeah, we ended up with Lux Neptus. And I also made the logo. I made it in blue and yellow. This will be like the main sort of one. But um, there's a manga series called Twin Star Exorcist. And basically for their volumes, they have like a white one, then a black one. Then I wanted to do something like that. Because, you know, like the two factions and stuff. So that's why we've got... Oh, uh, don't, don't move that. We've got the blue and the yellow. And I also put a grayscale one because uh, in some volumes and stuff, you'll have it, like, printed on a page. They're often chapter one. Like, you'll have your first page, your double color spread, then because there's a blank page, they often have the title. I think things like Naruto and My Academia do it. If you've read some physical volumes, you've probably seen what I'm talking about. Um, I, I do have I, a recording of of my process, but I, I'll just show you some of the things, um, I, I like to create a big document, and, like, you can kind of see my steps, because, I mean, you don't have to worry about storage, actually, we might go through, um, we'll hold it with this hand, so yeah, that, I started off with fonts and stuff that were from, like, Canva's existing things, I use Canva because that's what I know how to use, um, and then this one's like the tattoo one, and then I, th I think this was just looking at funky fonts, and then the way I did this effect, because, um, basically, it's three layers of the same text, I've just, um, used the outline tool and made it thicker and darker for each layer underneath, so the top layer has the thinnest outline, with the lightest colour and then getting bigger and bigger. I feel like there was... Oh no, I... okay, this is a different font to what I ended up using. This one looks kind of cool, but it kind of... This kind of looks like, a, I don't know, like those 70s, like, disco fonts. Um, I, I What I ended up happening is I felt like the font was a bit too, um... Curvy and round. So yeah, that's where I ended up changing the font. Um... We tried, like, I guess, trying with some different backgroundy stuff. So, yeah. This one looks kind of similar to, to, like, Kingdom Hearts with, like, the heart in the background, which was, like, in the graffiti section. I put, like, a little sun on the eye, trying to, I guess, spice it up. And then I, that crown was just random. There is no crowns in the series so far. Like, I haven't thought of stuff like that. But, yeah. Playing around and then playing around with color. I did also consider having a subtitle of Light Descendant, um, because I wasn't sure if people, like, I, I felt like maybe because it's in Latin I would need to translate it, you know, to make it more accessible and stuff. But the way I have gotten around that is I have just made this my main character's name. Now, I'm not usually someone that just names the series after the main character. I feel like I never do this, like... I can't think of anything, I've, any project, and I've had a lot of projects, like, even from when I'm a kid, I can't think of any where I just named it the main character's name. Um, oh, I just noticed there's, like, this little tiny white gap there. Kind of annoying. Yeah, and then I ended up getting rid of the crown, because it didn't feel necessary. I feel like I like it without the crown. I mean, the crown's cool, but the crown doesn't really have any significance. I just added it, because it looks cool, which... I feel like is not quite a good enough reason. But the reason why I went with um the, the circle is because I wanted something that like looks like a sun and a moon. I mean, this still kind of looks like a moon. But, like, because, yeah, when I was doing the... There was, like, a sun version. And I was like, oh, well, 
I want a dark version, but I probably want to make that a moon. And then I was like, wait, a circle can look like both a sun and a moon. Bam. And we also did some character names. Um, Because, yeah, technically I already had, like, a name for them, but I didn't like them. Uh, like, Luster was the name that Lux had, but I feel like Lux suits seem better. Also, it's, like, it's secretly a reference to Monitor Comics. He he he. Um, and then Morrigan was, uh, Cesare, I think was, but Cesare is a girl's name, um, technically, so, and I just thought that I, I wanted to change it. I kept Morrigan, because I was like, I was too lazy to come up with something else. Um, but it's Azaz Azazel? Actually, I should look up how to pronounce that eventually. I was thinking it could be, like, shortened to, like, Aza or... Azza, that's like a little nickname that feels that feels kind of cute um and then yuri is the the father that's why they have the same last name as um main boy and i think that's everything i've done this week so ne the next week the plan is to um do some good old storyboarding also i've got my sketchbook um i've I feel like this is what I had done last week. I think that's where last week left off. This was done like I'd go to like this art thingy. I did some redesigns of Sora and Riku because of course I did. These are like if they were in Genshin, so this is meant they're meant to be like they're in, in the zoom in versions. I do have rants to talk about how I would make them have skill sets and stuff. But I also um kind of been developing a new character because I love my main boy duo, but, like, for most of the story, especially at the start of the story, the whole point is that they're separated. So I was like, oh, I should probably start thinking about, you know, the characters that are actually going to be interacted with beyond this first chapter that, you know, I want my everyone to care about so that they, you know, read my story. So, yeah, this is the one. Um, This was just, like, a random sort of sketch I did, and then I did a, some more. And this is, I guess, like a full body design of them. Um, if anyone has a name for this girl, I'm thinking she's got like spidery powers. Like, so she's on the dark side. And I just thought that spidery powers are cool. She's also kind of inspired by Nagito from Danganronpa because of course. And I think that's it for this week. Um, thanks for watching. I feel like these videos keep getting longer and longer. Maybe I'm just getting better at waffling. Um... So yeah, I'm gonna go.